Hi guys, it's Matt here from Brit vs Japan. Wanted to say that I kind of want to start making regular videos um, because I, I've been putting more time into the blog up until now, uh, and I want to put a bit more time into YouTube because I know that YouTube is like uh, people tend to watch YouTube videos more um, than than reading uh, blog posts, and so I kind of figured like making more videos would probably be a good idea. So what I'm thinking of doing is making like one video uh, every week, which I will try, hopefully, to put out uh, probably on a Monday. I haven't decided yet, but whenever or when I do decide, I will let you know which day it's going to be. And I'm going to like make it a specific day so it's easier for like you guys to, to know when the video is coming out. Um, so this video uh, is about starting off sentence mining as a beginner. Uh, now, if you're obviously if you're not a beginner, then this might not be that useful for you, although you might find some um, bits of information that might be useful um, and basically the, the the main thing I'm going to say is which I know is very generic advice and you, you know you might not want to hear it as well is you're going to have to plow through the beginning stages uh, because it is very difficult um, and so just knowing that as long as you stick to sentence mining or, or you just and immersion obviously uh, as long as you stick to the process that you will get better the beginning stage is especially hard because you don't know anything. Um, and the way that language learning works is, I've used this analogy before, uh, but it, it's much like a snowball uh, falling down a mountain and gradually turning into a bigger snowball, right? You start off with basically nothing, and then as you learn more and you learn more words, that allows you to have a bigger capacity to learn more words. So it's, it's exponential growth. Uh, the more you know, like, the much more you will be able to know, if that makes sense. So the beginning stage, as I say, is very difficult because it's very hard to get to a stage where you can start understanding things um, and, and kind of enjoying what you're consuming. So what do you do in that stage to try and make it easier? Well, one of the biggest things that I did was using uh, a program called subs to srs to make Anki flashcard decks out of my favorite TV shows. A lot of you who follow me will know about this. So you'll even use my decks or make have made your own decks. Um, and you may have seen my article on it, which I, or my, my blog post on it, which I've written um, on my website and I'll link to in the, in the description below, uh, which is a full tutorial that shows you how to do this. So I'm not gonna go into the details of how to do it now. I also have videos on how to do it as well. So there's also that. But basically the idea is that you take um, your favorite TV show, take the subtitles for that TV show. As long as they are properly timed, you can just chuck them both into this program um, and it will output um, an Anki deck for you. All you have to do is reorganize that Anki deck into an efficient sort of layout, which I, again, I'll show you how to do in the, in the blog post. Um, and from there, you can just study your favorite TV shows by going through line by line, deleting the lines that are too hard or that are too easy, and saving the lines that you might want to actually study later on. Um, and if I'm on, if, if, you know, to be honest with you, I think without that, I would have really, really struggled with sentence mining in the beginning stages. Uh, when I very first started off, um, I believe I s see my memory on this is very bad because it's quite a few years ago now. But I'm pretty sure I just w when I very first started, I plowed through a lot of sentences from a couple of pre-made decks on the Anki website, um, on the Anki web website. Sorry, the shared decks part of the Anki website. Um, and I did this before actually finishing RTK, which is a very bad move. That I wouldn't do that um and it was at that point i hadn't had much immersion i hadn't heard any of the words that were in these decks a lot um and so it was very much just going over my head but i was just plowing through and like forcing myself to like study and i had a huge failure rate i failed a lot basically and i didn't have a great uh, success rate um so but that was fine because i was still learning to some degree, it wasn't much, but you know, it was to, to a certain degree. Um, and yeah, I just kind of plowed through those. And then of course I realized that I needed to do RTK uh, properly before really doing this because I found it way too hard. I did RTK, I went back to sentence mining. Um, I found it a little bit easier, 
but I still found it a, a quite quite difficult. And up until the monolingual transition, I actually stuck with those uh, pre-made decks, which a lot of people don't recommend. I also don't recommend it either. However, as I say, I used it myself, um, and I don't. I never had too many issues. The only thing I do know is that I do remember uh, like finding a few mistakes in a couple of these decks later on, um, and so that that's what kind of makes me think that people shouldn't be using them because I know that they are made by they're not necessarily made by natives or they may be made from native material but people may not notice mistakes uh in in you know if there's a typo or whatever you know people might not notice um and so there are issues there um and so if you don't know what the source of the deck and where it's been made like where it's come from then I wouldn't even bother there are some decks on the Anki um on the Anki web you know the shared decks page that are literally sentences that have been written by other foreigners that don't speak native japanese and that don't understand fully the language um, and so by downloading those decks and studying their japanese you may think that you might be getting better at japanese but you're not you're studying bad japanese which means your japanese is going to sound bad and so that's that's an issue um so if you are going to use a pre-made deck then either use a take him pre-made deck but again could be typos you know um the best thing i w the thing that i would do is make your own take him deck that way that you know if there are typos and there are mistakes it's your own fault um you know um and that, that's one of the issues with typing in anki, an anki which i'll get to in a bit um but uh, either do that or use the core 2000 decks i don't know if they're still up or not but they're the ones that i used um, and they are actually based off another course and they have native audio and the sentences as, as far as i remember as i said i don't have them in my deck anymore in fact i don't have my deck anymore i deleted it uh, but as far as i remember those sentences are are accurate or are correct um, as, as far as I can remember, I didn't have any issues with them. Um, and as I say, they've got native audio, so you would you would like to think that they are correct. Um, but I haven't checked. So again, disclaimer: I haven't checked. Um, ideally, you don't want to use any of these resources, and you want to entirely get sentences from um, other places. But obviously, it is difficult in the beginning stages because you don't have a base to start with, and so you kind of need say 500 to a thousand sentences where you have english to help you out which is why i use those those core decks um ideally what you would want to do if you don't want you know you shouldn't be using those what you should be doing is finding your own sentences then like tr like getting the translations for the vocab um and then putting that on the back of your cards like the english versions on the back of your cards so you have the japanese sentence you have the english on the back um, and then from there, you kind of try and guess what the sentence is saying. And I know it can be very infuriating because you don't have a de uh, like an actual translation to check. Um, and that makes it even more difficult. I understand that. But that is probably the best way to go about it. Um, and you kind of just have to sort of wing it to some extent and just sort of believe that you're making progress. Because it can feel like sometimes you're just like, oh, I have no idea. But I it might be this but i don't really know but i've got no way of checking so what the hell and then you know just do that and just keep going and going and going the thing is with language learning is if you do that enough you will make progress um which is it's kind of funny um and it, you shouldn't worry about making mis understanding comprehension mistakes because comprehension mistakes will always eventually correct themselves and if they don't correct themselves then it doesn't matter because hear me out here basically if you if you understand something incorrectly and that comes up in a conversation that you, with you know with other people that you are in and you then say the you, you sort of say something on the basis of your misunderstanding someone will call you out on that and someone will say hang on a minute that's not what that means what are you talking about and then you'll go but isn't that what this means? And then they'll say, no, 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 no. That's not what that means. That It means this. And they'll correct you. And so under, 
making mistakes in comprehension isn't this isn't that bad it's not a huge issue um and in the majority of the time it won't actually come to that it won't actually come to you having conversations with people and it you know you realizing that you misunderstood misunderstood something in that conversation it will just take a lot of input once you get enough input you'll realize that actually what you understood as one thing is actually something else and i've had this tons of times when listening to japanese over the you know my first year and a half um and i'd be watching a tv series and i'd be like oh that thing that i learned on the srs the other day that doesn't mean that that means something completely different um you know because it just came up in this tv show in a different in a slightly easier to understand context um and so it you don't need to worry about understanding something incorrectly as long as you think you kind of understand something then that's fine you can learn the sentence and move on at least that's my take on it anyway um and so i would just do that um and just get as many of those sentences as you can where you you sort of think you understand what's going on it doesn't matter if you don't fully get it um but also you don't want to get sentences that you completely don't understand because those ones are just going to be really hard to learn or hard to try and learn um and it'll be a waste of time because you could spend i've done it before i've spent like 30 minutes just sitting at the sitting at the screen going what the freaking hell does that mean and then getting to the point where i'm just like screw it delete and if you get to that point obviously it's just a waste of time so you just want to go for the easy ones um or the ones where you kind of think you get it and go from there um so as i say yeah use the convert your tv shows and anime shows into ankydex method using substrace rs as i said i'll link all the links to that and it's in the description below and also if you want to use a pre-made deck but be careful where the pre-made deck comes from and just check its sources first um i would recommend you kind of don't do that and you make your own pre-made deck from like re you know resources that you can trust uh such as take him or tv shows again um and then just put english translations of words on the back of you know your flashcards um ideally you should be doing this for like the first 500 to a thousand sentences uh which will give you a good base you don't want to do too many um english sentences like you don't want to do too many flashcards with english on them because that kind of defeats the point of learning japanese because it, it you, you end up training yourself to translate between the languages not necessarily how to understand japanese in japanese so you kind of want to move to japanese only flashcards as quickly as possible um and the way of the way you do that is just by using a japanese dictionary instead of an english dictionary so instead of having english translations on the back of your cards um f like for vocab words you would have japanese uh, definitions or explanations for grammar points um, and that in itself is a really good way of sort of understanding the language and also building a way of explaining things in Japanese because you learn how to explain stuff the same way as a dictionary does which is a great great tool for being um, it sort of teaches you a very clear way of defining something and sort of and being able to express something using other words um, and using often words that are much simpler um, which is which is great um, it can be difficult sometimes and I'm not I'm not you know I'm not saying it's easy um, and definitely the first month that you make that switch will be very difficult um, I found it to be difficult too um, but if you do use the tv shows method so to speak if you use substar srs um you don't have to use that for this but um if you, you if you can use that to basically generate like thousands of sentences um, and anki has a browser option so you can actually type in a keyword and it will display all the cards in in anki or in a deck uh, that have that keyword in so this is what i like to call my, a sentence bank and it was the whole reason that i made that um, article and those videos um, about this um, was because it Anki allows you to basically create a massive massive bank of sentences uh, you know you can have a flashcard uh, you have one flashcard with one sentence on it which you get from either your tv shows 
or you could just import a book that's in a text file or another file that Anki, uh, that Anki supports. Um, or you could just have like, I don't know, any other form of text, uh, as long as it's in Japanese, you know, and it will go into Anki. Um, just shove that into Anki. Anki will put it into separate flashcards, like one, you know, as I say, one uh, sentence per flashcard. And then before you know it, you have a massive bank of flashcards. And then what we can do from here is when you create a flashcard, um, you know, a sentence flashcard, you put the Japanese on the front, you're looking at that one word you don't understand, you put it in the dictionary, you look through the definitions and you think you kind of get it, but you're not entirely sure. So you look at the, the example sentences in the dictionary and you find out that they're all incredibly hard or they're from like really weird texts, like old um like really old Japanese literature and it's kind of you, you're kind of looking at all the words and that and you're like I, I, I don't know what's going on <laughs> uh, when that happens what you want to do is just take that word shove it into the Anki browser find the other sentences that have that word in it and just read them and see if you can kind of find another sentence that you understand with that word in and then what that does is it gives you um, a greater understanding of how the words are used in what context it's used in um, and therefore, uh, a better understanding of its meaning. And you've already read the dictionary definition by this point. So you'll kind of get a better understanding. You, you'll probably click um, as to what the word means. Um, and so I think that's a really powerful thing that you could, that all of us could do um, with Anki. Because, you know, as I say, Anki allows you to do this so easily. Um, and if you're just using text, then, you know, this, the file size is nothing. If you're using SubsRSRS to make decks... Uh, the audio and the video files take up a lot of memory, so that is an issue. But if you're just using um, if you're just using text, then it's it's not a huge deal. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, once you get to the monolingual transition, um, you've kind of got to a relatively basic level of reading. Um, I don't know. You're probably at like JLPT N four N three maybe it's very hard to judge i don't i've never done the jlpt so i don't i can't actually tell um but i think it's about that level it's 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 relatively high to be honest um there's a lot there'll be a lot of stuff you don't know obviously um you wouldn't know everything in the tests um but i'm just trying to give you a rough idea once you've done the monolingual transition you'll start seeing your japanese reading ability skyrocket because you'll start like really starting to understand a lot um, and once that happens you're just you, you're good you're, you're set um, you all you just got to do from then on is just keep reading and enjoy what you're reading um, as I say I think the very very first beginning month of learning a new language it's very much sort of um, pushing through a brick wall um, you very much just got to keep punching through that wall and just sort of try and scrape some vocab out of um you know trying just try and learn something so that you can build from that and then learn more it's very difficult to do um and i do remember the first few months being very very intense um and i was i was lucky to to have started doing this uh during a summer holiday um just at the end of high school um so that was that was good for me um but as i say f you know other people don't have as much time so you might find that the progress is slightly slower and that's fine you know i wouldn't worry about it just take it as it is just realize that as long as you keep putting the effort in and you keep going you will make progress um and that this is probably the fastest way to make progress but just know that yeah keep going and you will make progress um sentence mining is very much it's kind of like at the beginning, it's not that efficient, and then it got so it, it kind of gets more, and more, more and more efficient, and, and it, it gets to a point where reading becomes more efficient than sentence mining. So, um, but that that's like after fluency, you know. So, yeah, at the beginning stages, just push for it. Um, and yeah, as I say, you you need to use English for the first month or so. Um, for the first 500 to 1,000 sentences. I think other people recommend doing more sentences uh, with English and other people recommend doing less. Um, and I personally, I don't know what's what the right answer to that is. All I know is what I've done, so I can't, I can't comment on that. But um, I wouldn't recommend doing too many. I think 1,000 
for me personally, I thought a thousand was too many in itself. But um, when you think about it, in the grand scheme of the Japanese language, a thousand sentences isn't much. So, you know, does it really matter? Probably not. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then leave a like and subscribe and I guess hit the bell. I don't really know how YouTube works these days. But um, anyway, <laughs> um, if you like, yeah, as I say, if you enjoy this content, then don't forget to um, do all that good stuff. And if you really, really like it and you really found it useful, then you can check out my Patreon and you can support me on there. Um, and you can also uh, take a look at my website. I've also got like other useful content on there, which I haven't talked about on my YouTube channel yet, although I will do at some point. Um, and yeah, I hope to be getting a new video out soon. I think the next video is going to be, um, it's going to be about Anki and SRS in general, but it's, it's aimed at complete beginners. So anybody who's watching this probably won't need to watch it, but I want to put something out for the complete, you know, for the newbies. Um, and I want to make sure that I cover sort of everything, I guess, which is why I kind of want to do start doing a weekly sort of um, video thing. Um, I just hope that I can I can manage that along with everything else I've got to do because <laughs> I've got a lot of coursework um, and my video editing software and my computer are terrible. So um, I do need to get a new computer. That is one of the things that I need to do. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you. I also wanted to say a massive thank you to Diedrich, Eric, R and everybody else who's been supporting me on Patreon who, and who has supported me on Patreon so far. You guys have just done amazing, like, it's crazy how many people are supporting me on such a small channel and such a small kind of project. And I know that I don't put enough time into making videos and content on my website and I feel really bad about that. However, I always make sure that I keep putting up content on my Patreon. So if you want to see more content, then definitely come over and check out the Patreon page. Um, and I will, this year, I will try to put out as much content as I possibly can. I am busy at university. I have coursework. I, you know, have a lot of work to do, you know, as a, a final, soft, you know, final year software engineering student, but I'm trying my best to do this on the side as well. Um, and your support just means everything. It, you know, it helps me pay my bills and it helps me to, as I say, make more content. And yeah, it, it's awesome. And I love doing it. I love answering your questions. And I love helping you guys out. So thank you guys so much. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, I'm so grateful. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.